This is Geometry, Chapter 13, Section 3, in which we look at geometric probability. So we've talked about probability sum already. Now we're going to apply it to some geometric ideas. When we talk about geometric probability, what we're talking about is any time that your probability involves things you can measure, like lengths or areas or volumes or anything of that sort. And what we're finding is the geometric probability. Now, the first case here, we have a line segment. We have J, K, L, and M marked on there, and we have some lengths. And I'm just going to pick some random spot on this line, on this segment. I want to know what's the probability that the random spot I pick, I just close my eyes, throw, throw a dart, and it hits the line. What's the probability that that point will be in here between L and M? To do that, we need a basic probability idea for uh, segment lengths. And your probability is going to be simply the length of your target segment over the total length of the whole thing. So in this case, if we're going for LM, that's our target. The length of that is 4 over the whole length. Well, if we add these up, we find out that it's 14. So I have a 2 sevenths chance of getting a point on here. Okay. If you wanted to, you could give me a decimal point two eight seven or whatever it is. Or you could make it a percent. Those are also acceptable. I'm going to leave them as fractions because I didn't need much work to get to there. <clears throat> now, suppose we want to find the probability that we're on segment KM. All right, segment KM, that probability is going to be the length KM, which is 11, out of the whole 14. Again, you could make it a decimal if you wanted to. It's not necessary by any means, but you're allowed to. And I'll have both correct and the percent. I'll have all three correct answers available. But I'm just going to stick to that because it's less work. Now, the same idea applies to two-dimensional areas. But instead of finding the total length, we have to find the total area. So what we've been doing the last couple of chapters where we're finding areas of things is still in play. Okay, It's still fair game to expect you to know how to find the area of a triangle or a rectangle or anything of that sort. Yes, even the apothem is still in play. Now, in this case, we're doing something simple. We're working with circles. So we get somebody up in a plane, and he jumps out, and there's this target down on the ground that our skydiver is supposed to hit. And just to make sure we're clear, it tells us that the centers, the circles are concentric. It means they all have the same center point. Okay. The innermost circle has a diameter of 1, and then the other circles are spaced out one more yard. So across here is 1. This section between these two circles is 1. Same thing over here. Same thing here, and same thing here. If it doesn't look like it, well, that's too bad, because that's what it tells us. So the question is, what's the probability that he hits in this innermost circle? Okay. First, we need to find the inner area. Well, if the diameter is one yard, then the radius is half a yard. So we're going to find that area, pi times a half squared, and I'm just going to leave it as a pi because I know I'm going to have another area in the denominator and the pi's are just going to cancel. So I'm going to make my life simpler, not push the pi button, not put in 3.14. I'm just going to make life easy. If you want to put in 3.14, if you want to push the pi button, hey, knock yourself out. Not literally, please. The paperwork is a nightmare. The next thing I need is the total area. So I need the whole thing. Well, if this radius is a half, 
and this is 1, and this is also 1. That makes a total 2.5 for the radius. Plug that into our circle equation, and we get 6.25 pi. So our probability is the inside area divided by the outside, or the total area. The pi's are going to cancel, and that fraction reduces to 1 25th. Or you might have 0 0.04 if you did decimal work, or it could be 4% if you turned it into a percent. Those are also good. Okay. Now, one more thing I want to deal with here is we have a spinner. And when you have a spinner, you can get around finding the areas if you know all the arcs or all the angles. Okay. We can work around the areas when we have a spinner. It's really nice. We know all of these arcs have to add up to 360 degrees. So the probability that we're in zone A would be 35 out of those 360, which reduces to 770 seconds, or if you're a decimal user, you can see the decimal there. Okay. The probability of being in B or C, well, B or C is this whole zone, that's going to be 155 degrees out of the whole 360. That reduces to 3170 seconds or the equivalent decimal. And then they like to throw this idea at you. Not D. Anything but D. Well, D is 110 degrees. If D is 110 degrees, that means everything else is 250. And that reduces to 2536, which gives you another decimal. Okay. Sometimes you have to find uh, areas, particularly like in bullseye type situations. When you have a spinner, you can get away with uh, not doing the area if you know all the arcs or all the angles. And when it's segments, it's just the target segment over the whole length. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you. We'll see you in class.